Unfortunately, sometimes news about water quality in Iowa seems to be bad news. Algae blooms and fish kills. But you know there are some good things happening in Iowa's water. If you want to see a wonderful example of an inspiring story about what Iowa citizens can do to help protect water quality, there's no better place to start than here at Lake Darling State Park in Washington County. This is Professor Neil Hamilton from the Drake University Agricultural Law Center with today's episode of Our Water, Our Land. I came here to beautiful Lake Darling to see for myself what lessons we can learn. Many Iowa lakes suffer from poor water quality, even beach closings. The situation here at Lake Darling had become so bad a number of years ago that it was on the state's list of impaired waters and the beach was closed because it was unsafe for people to use. That's when local residents realized that the future of their park was in jeopardy, and they united together to begin the project that would lead to this wonderful restoration. With its very existence in jeopardy, local citizens banded together to see what they could do to save their lake and their park. They formed the Friends of Lake Darling, and for years worked soliciting private donations. With the help of local politicians, they were able to secure a state appropriation to fund a lake restoration. With that $16 million secured, the State Department of Natural Resources was able to undertake an extensive project to restore and protect the future of Lake Darling. The 300-acre lake was drained, the dam was rebuilt, more fish habitat was installed, and new park structures were built. In addition, over 300,000 cubic yards of silt was removed from the lake's bottom. Perhaps the most important step in protecting the future of the lake was the work of the farmers and landowners in the watershed surrounding it. They knew that if the investments put into restoring the park were to be able to continue into the future, changes would have to be made on the land. Working with local soil and water conservation officials and members of the USDA, they were able to develop a plan for how this could be done. The great news is that 59 of the 71 farmers and landowners in the watershed agreed to install permanent conservation practices designed to help protect the future water quality and prevent siltation from reaching the lake. The hard work of all of these stakeholders paid off and in 2014 a wonderful ceremony was held to rededicate Lake Darling State Park. The park's namesake, renowned Iowa conservationist and cartoonist Ding Darling would have been very proud of this effort. There are many lessons that we can take from what happened here at Lake Darling. First, it took concerned local citizens to become involved. Second, they developed a plan and had a vision for the future. Third, by combining private fundraising with a significant appropriation of public funds from the state, they were able to secure the funds that it would take to carry out this large project. And fourth, by working with the farmers and landowners in the watershed, they were able to apply conservation practices and water quality protection methods at a scale that was necessary to make the changes permanent. Without these four elements, local support, a vision and a plan, significant funding, and the cooperation of local landowners and farmers, the project would not have succeeded. These lessons from Lake Darling show other communities and landowners and farmers across our state what's possible if they work together and if they take a watershed approach towards protecting water quality. The lessons from Lake Darling can be applied by citizens and in watersheds all across our state. This has been Professor Neil Hamilton from the Drake University Agricultural Law Center with today's Our Water, Our Land coming to you from the beautifully restored Lake Darling State Park in Washington County.